Welcome to Mamas and Mimosas. I'm Janelle. I'm Roni. And I'm Marianne. And today we're talking all about how to talk to your kids about sex. The different ways to approach it, which parents should do it, at what ages to start having the conversations. So grab your mimosas, pop in those earphones, and let's dive right into episode four. Woo! So, did your parents talk to you about sex? What age and how did they talk to you about it? Okay, so what's the matter? Oh, I was seeing who goes first. I just asked asked myself. I thought we were keeping it flowing. (laughs) So we'll we'll go this way. Okay, so heck no, my parents did not talk to me. I feel like those horrible 90s videotapes VHS that they show you in school where it's like pubertina is feeling a certain way you oh, remember that? That? yeah I do yeah that's how I learned from watching the videos <laughs> pubertina <laughs> I don't even know I don't even know if that was the name that they used but I feel like that's when I first really knew and they hand about out all it. the condoms and to the class yeah and, all the dudes and it was take, so like, five. weird and then, you, and then you went out to do you have nutrition or it's not in middle school you just have lunch and you go out to lunch and then talk to your friends about like that video was so cringy but no they didn't cringy <laughs> I have a I have a teenager who taught me that. Oh my God. <laughs> what about you, Janelle? Uh, okay, so I covered it on the last one a little bit, but because I was so young when I was sexually abused, I at five years old, oh we kind of had I, five. Yeah, we're gonna have to have an episode where like we covered deeper on that, and Definitely. maybe. Um, Definitely. But I was only five, and the person who did it was. 18 years old and he was actually a family member a cousin that came to live with us for a little bit so when when it all happened I remember like being afraid that I was pregnant I don't know why but I remember just thinking as a five-year-old like that I I remember asking my mom how horrible yeah and so (laughs) it'll get real deep okay but Basically, at five years old, I was wondering and afraid that I was pregnant. And finally, when everything came out and stuff, then I told my mom, and then my mom was like, Lost "Oh her shit. shit, yeah, yeah this is Lost serious." Her shit. All so all like, they took me to the hospital to get the whole like rape kit done and all that. <sighs> and so, <laughs> I was really young when they talked to me about sex. After that, after everything had happened, obviously. At five, you don't think about yeah. talking to your kids no. about sex, you know? No. Um, so it wasn't their fault that it all, you know, happened so early, but that's the situation that happened, so it was really early. And then after that happened, I feel like we kind of didn't talk about it at all because it was so weird and uncomfortable situation. And then when I started getting into high school and it started getting more heated with my boyfriend and stuff, then my mom was like, okay, so... You know, tell me what are you guys yeah. up to, and do you need me to, you know, take you to the doctors? And and I think she, she knew. Was she still afraid of, of like what happened prior to you, like when you were five? Like was she still worried about that though? Like happening again? Well, just because she knew you were in a serious relationship, like did she? Did, was it ever a concern for her because it had already happened to you? No, because I feel like we were always, like, when I would date somebody, I, I was pretty open with her, and I would tell her, like, I was afraid to ever uh. have sex, and I always told her I wanted to wait till marriage, and she was always very supportive of that, and yeah. saying, like, if the guy loves you, he's gonna, he's gonna wait for you, and if he doesn't, then obviously he's not the one, so we kind of had that open communication, you know, so when things got a little he like more serious with my husband or boyfriend then um she kind of could tell you know we yeah. were always together and stuff, so she yeah. would ask a She's lot more dumb. questions and yeah. she was like yeah. so then she was like okay well if you try it once <laughs> then you're probably gonna try it it's easier to try it again and again and again so if you really want to hold it's out till marriage <laughs> you know you you got to make that clear to him but if not i'm just letting you know like if you decide to try it one time like you're probably going to want to do it more often. But then she also told me, too, like, it hurts. And 
I didn't know that it was going to hurt. Mm. On the movies, everything's all hot and of heavy, course. you know? I mean, so they don't tell the truth. Um, the but she told me, like, it hurts. And so just make sure that the person that you do it with is going to be that special person that's going to, you know, yeah, care about you and not a oh, wham, bam, thank you. So her man. talk with you at five was completely different than in high school. Like, because Landon's going to be five. So was it yes. something you processed and totally understood at five? No. Okay. No. At five, it was like, nobody should be touching you there. No. Nobody should be touching your privates. Yeah, That's not until you're married. So, okay. you know what I mean? So, and, and what happened older. to you was wrong and things like that. So, it wasn't, she didn't go all deep into like that. what it was. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Until later on. Yeah. Huh. I didn't really, my mom never, we didn't have that kind of relationship where we were very open. Mm -hmm. But I, as I was in high school and got into a serious relationship, like, at the end of the conversation on the phone, she'd always be like, you better behave before she hung up. Like that, that was, was And that cute. was how I was mm -hmm. like, is she telling me because she knows I have I'm them having it wide <laughs> open. <laughs> so I, I think that was her way of trying to talk to me about it. But that's the only thing I can think of, of like that I'm trying to talk to me about. <laughs> well, I know like statistics say that you should talk to your child about sex when you talk to them about puberty. Like it goes hand in hand. Like but, your cycle, but what about yeah, for boys? Yeah. Oh, when, yeah. Oh, yeah. When they have their <laughs> little fancy dream. <laughs> like, okay. Is that when they hit it? And they yeah, have a dream? dream? Yeah. <laughs> the fancy dream. What's I don't that? Know. I like the band come boy to that band yet. that sings wet dreams. Wait, it's like or an that. old boy band. And see? No. About uh, ninety-eight. No, ninety-eight. No, no, not that degrees? old. Oh my god. What are we talking? Eighties, nineties, nineties, nineties. It's not that Sexual idea, dreams or wet dreams? I have no dreams. I, I, I don't know, but that's what I was thinking. <laughs> have yeah. you, if either of you, ever heard your parents getting down and dirty? Or, like, did you know what they were doing? And how old were you? Whew, well, uh, <laughs> man. I remember I walked in on them. I was, I think I was in ninth grade. And I was literally traumatized. It was like, it was obvious what we're going. I don't even know why they didn't lock the door. I'm like, come on. But then I feel like. really blame that? I, I know, right? Last episode. Yeah. Two episode. You're right. But my drunk husband was, he was supposed to do that at the time. He was drunk. But um, they were not drunk or anything. Like, they should have, like, locked the door. But I feel like. That's my fault, too, because I'm going into my parents' room. I should have knocked. Like, there's you didn't just walk into your parents' room. Like, after that happened to me, like, I told my son, like, you need to knock before you enter. And then <laughs> and then I got the favor return. But uh, anyways, yeah, so I, I was traumatized. Like, it was awful. My dad looked like, well, my mom was looking like she wasn't enjoying Were they enjoying in, like, it. An, uh, like, a bad position? What, like... She was literally <laughs> on top of him. Like, Just and like my, missionary, or, like, she was riding him. She was riding him, and my dad's face was, like, to the side, and it was just looking like the most awful thing. Like, it didn't even look like, like they, they were really into it. it. It was like... It looked like it was a chore. It well, definitely looked like a chore. Well, they also were, like, they heard the door open so they were like and they just start <laughs> laughing and I closed the door like they they, they were caught there was no way of getting they out of it I would have died so I just closed the door and went in my room and got in the corner and walked back and forth <laughs> like a crazy person I did not <laughs> yes so. exactly I did not but I felt like doing it so yeah traumatized for life and I'm traumatized for life again and I'll tell you guys why and in a little bit and the next question yep yeah. yep 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 so when I was little I remember I feel I think I was really like younger than five and I had a bad dream or maybe I heard something I don't know but I got up out of bed and it was dark and I remember I had to have been younger than five because we lived at our first house and I walked to my parents room and my mom's gonna kill me but they were getting it on and my, I opened the door and all of a sudden like the pillow came flying at me because they they got caught you know so my dad was like get out of here and he threw the pillow and I like ran to my brother's room and I like <laughs> I went in to sleep with him, and I was afraid that I was going to get in trouble, but I also was like, what are you doing to her? <laughs> stop, stop, stop hurting my mommy. Stop hurting my mom. But, but I didn't understand what was yeah. going on. You know, you're so young. You don't know what's going on. So do you remember You just know that they're naked, and you're wondering why, oh you know, goodness. but... Um, How? But when I was older, 
all of our rooms were super close together and our wall we shared a wall and I would hear them and because <laughs> but my mom would always play it off she was smart she would be like oh your dad was giving me a massage and I'm like nice try yeah. but I believe her <laughs> I believed her until my boyfriend started giving me those same massages, massages. and, and I'm like oh, wait a minute no, you are talking are great you were talking about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice try good oh, cover up the stuff that we tell our kids though right like, you know I know they're kind like of, and they know it's bullshit, but it, we, it just makes us feel better that we said that. They don't know like, it's bullshit until they start having sex, and then and they're, they're like, like, that that was bullshit. a lot. That's or what, if they was. listen to your podcast, and then oh, they know no. that it's you, they're calling you buff. This podcast is not so, meant for children. Exactly. Roni's eldest listened to our sex uh -huh. episode, so yeah. that's what we're referring Out of to. all the episodes he can pick, he goes right to... Sex life after kids. Like, so really? The cat's Not out of the, the bag. All your secrets are I don't out. Know, now we can't pay bills anymore. Like, <laughs> everything's getting cut off. No water, nothing. <laughs> Shit. So I was 10 when my mom brought me to the Philippines. Well, like, my dad died when I was 5. And then, you know, so she met up with her, an old fling. Ooh, back that's in the Philippines cool. And brought me along and left my brother here in the States. So, like, she brought me with her. And, um... Oh my god, I was traumatized. So we we're staying at our family's house, which is like they had like a little, like visitor house on that's connected to the house, but you'd have to walk through the front door like to go into the house. So we we're staying in that room, and I remember I had to sleep on the floor, and they were on the bed, and for some reason it was dark and like super like I mean it was middle of the night. I woke up, I don't know why, but I hear something going on on the bed and I was like what the hell and I was I was 10 so I kind of knew like I would catch my brother or like my uncles like watching porn before okay. so I knew I had an idea and I'm like ew they were doing it and I'm right here <laughs> and I'm legit on the floor trying to stay still like I'm still asleep and they were going at it for a while. She so, thought you were sleeping. So yeah, she thought you were asleep I was. The whole they time. thought I was asleep on the floor, and then I finally waited till they like fell asleep or finished. And it was like five <laughs> in the morning. It was like break of dawn because the sun wasn't out, but it was still it was light already. I walk out the door because I'm so traumatized, and like the front door to the house was locked because no one's awake yet. And there's these chihuahuas running around everywhere, like, barking at me. So I climbed up a pole, and I was, like, waiting. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Why? Because the dogs were, like, barking at me and, uh -huh. like, trying to snap at me. So I climbed the pole. Little. And I was little, yeah. And I was, no one was, like, the, I locked myself out of the room we were sleeping in because they just had sex in front of me so, and the front door to Jesus the house. Christ. So my aunt finally, like, woke up early in the morning to start cleaning, and she, like, dusted this the floor off or whatever and open the door to sweep it out and she saw me like on the pole like what are you doing and I just came down and ran in the house and was like I don't I know rough like, night. Yeah. <laughs> I had a rough night so that was my experience of oh, walking God. in um, you walk you in ever on tell your mom no 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 one no one knows but you no you had knows. to go see them I mean, you hear them getting it on, and then you got attacked by the dogs and had a long black ball. <laughs> so I think ball. that too dramatized Yeah, like, that's, that's yeah, too that much. So that was my... Oh, Did you ever great. tell your mom that you knew what was going down? We never talked about it again, but they knew. They would, they start laughing. <laughs> and then, like, like the next day, or, or... Yeah, they never came out the room, and then the next day, it was just like... Nothing hey. happened. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. always mess with my mom. I'm like, mom, we heard you. Or I would pound on the wall. We hear oh, you. You guys really? are gross. Oh man. Oh, I, would they stop though? Or would they just keep going? Um, no, they would just keep going. No or one stops like in the morning. Like, I've got to get this out. <laughs> I'm not stopping. Or in the morning, my balls. mom would like laugh and be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Or your dad was giving me a massage. I don't know what you're talking I about. Oh, your mom. funny. Awesome. So, she would always play it off. But have you ever talked to your kids yet? I know, Roni, you have a teenager. Jack and it's Max It's about are still to little. get real. <laughs> <laughs> so. Tell us, girl. Um, as you know, I have a 13-year-old. And first off, I talk to all of my kids about any inappropriate touching, 
um you know that was the first talk like they all know like no one's supposed to, i don't care who it is like no one's supposed to touch you they know all that um but when it comes to other stuff like boys i always put my husband up to it um but this is so funny that we're on this topic because uh, recently, um, I've had a situation where <laughs> I just recently, um, paid my 13 year old back the favor of him walking in on me and my husband and I walked in on him and I, oh, somebody him else said, a bottle of lotion. Oh, yeah. it. I can't Stroking even say it. Good. It's like the most worst traumatizing thing a mother can ever he was playing see. his guitar guys like, i mean like first of all i feel like at first i was like struggling with the fact like okay the reason that i i caught him is because his door was closed and i'm really old-fashioned and i'm like you know you don't pay bills around here name ain't no closing doors but unless you're getting dressed or i know they need their privacy but so i was going in there to fuss about the door being closed and now I'm gonna let the door be closed and I'm just gonna say <laughs> his name before I come in because yeah, I don't You're think gonna it's be gonna stop. Before I don't you think it's gonna stop. Turn the door no. And my husband's like, You gotta let that little boy live. He's about to be in high school and he's gonna be fourteen. This is when it happens. So yeah, so I'm I'm still so bear with me today because I'm still a little rusty over what I've seen. So that you was just had yesterday. your husband talk to him. Yeah, so to today actually they had like a but they had already talked prior and i i already knew what was going on and i like joked with him like oh when you go to the bathroom i don't know if i mentioned it on the show before but he would go to the bathroom for long periods of time and i'm like i know you're not in there taking a dump i know what you're in there doing and he would just laugh about it and we left it at that which it's natural so like i knew they were it. gonna do it but i don't want to see it that's my thing. I don't want to see it. So <laughs> he's like, respect so, my locked door. <laughs> Ain't no locked doors in that's here. But you know why it's locked. But um, but yeah. So so now that you know what's going on, will you be okay with him being in a locked? Not room? no. Like I don't want the door locked. I feel like if you gotta do your thing, do it in a place where because there's no lock on his room door. Like none of my kids have locks on their door. And I feel like just do that shit in the shower or in the bathroom yeah, where the door locks. Yeah, but you were giving him a hard time about being in the bathroom for so long. So no, but I knew. Want him to no, do it. <laughs> but I knew what he was doing. Like we just laughed and joked about it. Like oh. I knew. I know it's gonna happen regardless of what I say till I'm black and blue in the face. Like, and I guess it's a, a natural thing that teenagers go through. But I feel like. He should do it somewhere where the door is locked. And now I will let his room door <laughs> be closed. Thanks to a clo I had a talk with a close friend who went through the same thing with her teenager. And I talked to her today and was like, she was like, you're overreacting. Calm down. But she's like with her son, she lets the door be closed. But before she comes in, she'll kind of be loud or call his name so he knows she's coming. And then she'll kind of like pause and then, you know, go in the door. So I think I'm gonna I'm try that out and see. But are you gonna ooh. talk to him or bring it up or Just kind of make it less awkward? Well, he knows that I know, obviously, because I was talking as I was. I was yelling at him about the door being closed, and then when I walked in, I actually closed the door back myself. So I mean, <laughs> I totally contradict myself. But um, yeah, I'm definitely going to <laughs> have a talk with. <laughs> Is he drunk? Wait, cool, hold on, pause. <laughs> Trevin! What's up? We pause, we hear the water and everything in the background. Oh, is it loud? Don't you it's hear it? It's very loud. I mean, I will, I, will it pick it up or no? Oh, I mean, not a ton. The mic's it won't pick it up? Way. Oh, okay. okay. But you were, like, tripping about the little buzzing, so the, that's... Yeah, but that buzzing was, like, a constant... Okay, hold on, let me finish watching. Also, he was you know, straight up eating popcorn. <laughs> oh, this is, this is, like, the best episode so far. This is so oh good. Oh, my God. But, like, the way you were doing the water, it was like... I'm sorry. So I'm like, someone's going to think someone's taking no, a dump in the back. No, it was really quiet. Or like, farting. I didn't think you guys would even be able to hear it anymore, so I'm oh, sorry. God, what was I saying last? Because... Uh, about talking to him. Oh, okay. Okay. Are you gonna talk to him? Okay. So I plan on talking wait, 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 to. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. While we're on a pause, let me restart the video camera so that. Okay. It's gonna stop itself if soon. You wanna ask that question again? Here. No, no, no. And whenever you're ready. 
So are you going to talk to him about it or are you going to act like it just never happened? No, I'm definitely not going to act like it didn't happen because we both know it ha it happened. But I want to talk to him and just let him know that I know he is a growing boy. And I know he's going to do it regardless. Just I want him to just be more cautious of his actions because he's not the only child in this house. Like he has a little brother that's seven and a, a sister that is Sorry. three so like i would have been <clears throat> dead if they walked in and they would have been super traumatized i'm traumatized myself but them they would have probably been like not looked at him the same so that's what i want to talk to him just about being a little more cautious about it you know we're not mad it, i i mean hey it is what it is so yeah i'll talk to him but if the else. roles were reversed say for like moms with a teenager that's a girl oh, like if would, it was Mm -mm. Harley and she was a teenager I and you walked in I'll be in the casket I don't know why it's like it's different with your girl I know I you know what I probably would get up you know. yell at her because you feel like you're the one who needs to talk to her because you know how Tyler well I'm, I'm definitely talking to Harley um and we've already had that talk about like no touchy touchy you know <laughs> down here and all that and she's like nobody better even someone like I think my niece or someone accidentally like they were like sitting in a chair and they actually like kicked her or mm -hmm. something and she's like no don't touch my tt <laughs> like she I'm like okay that was an accident but like she she will she tell knows. me like she already knows to tell That's me like her. anything so it's That's it's good. always different i feel like when you're dealing with girls than boys you know like yeah. you'll let your boy probably date earlier than you'll let your girl or you know the girls wear makeup it's just a different like perspective but don't mm. make me think about that man <laughs> i'm just Please. saying there's moms out there with girl teenagers Please. have you talked to the boys yet you know uh okay or so they? i tried to like avoid it and i try to put on my husband like hey you know you should Your talk job. to him. you're a guy you know but then when he told me what he said i was like well you didn't go into detail or you didn't tell him this or that or the other what you know he and say? he was just kind of vague about it you know and <laughs> and me like, i'm not a vague person i'm very descriptive, descriptive. Yeah. so then later on i'm because he didn't really ask about sex but he asked about he's 11 and he asked about where babies came from and That's i got really starts. nervous because i'm like okay well because it's they come yeah. from they sex. come from a store yeah. okay that's all you need so to know i used to blow door. it off all the time like oh i'll tell you when you're older or whatever but yeah. then i started telling my husband like he's gonna hear about this stuff at school like we have to talk yeah. to him you yeah. have to talk to him you're a man you've got to talk to him so then he he spoke with him and then i start, i was like what did you say and how did you put it and he and what did he say and he's like he was just fine you know well, i just said this like and you. he was fine and i'm like oh, if he i have to talk to him <laughs> yeah so you're like i'll do it there's this book actually uh one of our friends um recommended this book oh my gosh i don't know if it's what it's called it's called i think something about boys puberty i'll link it in the show notes but it was really good it talked about puberty and how you start growing hair in different places <laughs> and smelling in place and it's kind of like a comic book it makes it kind of funny and stuff and tells you all about pimples and everything and mm. little boners and everything you know <laughs> so i gave it to him over the summer and then i wanted to discuss it i'm like so what did you think like what did you know let's talk about it and he would just be like oh well i'm at you know this part where they're talking about hormones and whatever but he he's kind of like his dad just very kind of reserved yeah is so that because he's shy though about it with you he's not shy but he's just very vague you know like he's just kind of his answers are like one word answers um, so i'm it's like pulling teeth to yeah get, so i have to get really uncomfortable like it's a growing boy and, like a and embarrass myself so he could feel comfortable yeah. to get it out you know um so but recently i heard a podcast talking about how it is important to talk to your kids and how it's important to if especially when they ask about it you know tell them the truth about sex and not make it seem like it's a bad thing because yeah. you know be honest about the science behind it and how you know it's not it's not horrible and this is what couples do when they're of the right age you know and yeah and when they're married or whatever you want to teach your kids um so then after listening to that i'm like okay remember when 
when you asked me last year, you know, about this, where babies came from, well, I, and then I kind of broke down the whole science behind it, like, okay. women are made with a uh, placenta, and, oh, like, you totally, went I went there, so that it was, like, less awkward, and then, and then I told him kind of how the egg is inserted in the woman, and oh, all that win. stuff, but, so they but it was more scientific, he, he didn't. He didn't ask really like any it questions. Didn't, like, go no, over his head. Took, like he got he it. He seemed to like. He just kind of was like nodding and taking it in, and then I like, and then blah, I kept blah, stopping blah. and like, <laughs> do you have any questions about that? And then I just kind of kept going on and on, you know. But, um, yeah, I didn't. We didn't go into like sex, sex as far as like marriage and the actual act of it, act yeah, of it the yeah, intercourse yeah. and all that mm -hmm. stuff and the feelings involved we haven't touched on that yet um but i now i feel like i'm ready when he comes because, when your next well, they question said because kids like um can like start as early as like nine like going through puberty yeah so is that when you should talk to them about I'm it? i'm not sure but I, i'm like nine seems like, really really early but i know a couple girls who like started their period and stuff at like nine i i regret not answering the questions when when he was curious about it because who knows what the kids at school told him mm -hmm. you yeah. know and i just figured i would wait till he was in the fifth or sixth grade when they talk about it at school and just kind of yeah. piggyback on that but that hasn't happened yet so we kind of have to then I then I heard that podcast and about like it should come from your mouth first because you kind of want yeah to make sure that they're they understand it you know and then I'm like oh shit mom so, fail I that, fucked up that one that book <laughs> next you got him, the book you got him is is that what he was reading tonight the reason he couldn't come over <laughs> no. is that the book he was reading <laughs> now he finished that one what about you Marianne I, what are your he's plans he's five so I'm yeah. like the only thing I've talked to him about was like. Who, like, what are your private parts? Who's allowed to see it? Which is, like, mom, dad, or your doctor. That's mm -hmm. it. And, like, it's funny because I gave him a bath last night. And he stood up, you know, so I could put the towel around him. And I was just, like, observing him. And I noticed he stood up and, like, looked down. And he started, like feeling his balls and you know like when they touch it like the balls kind of come out and <laughs> so I, I didn't say anything I was just like watching him to see like if he would ask me or like ask what those are or anything and mm. he was just playing with them like marbles and I was just like kind of laughing but I like didn't say anything because I want him to ask me yeah. but I mean that's the only thing I've talked to him about like I don't know when which is what... appropriate yeah. like you know they're so little like so, five is super little, but and and I'm gonna jump on that too. And I I did talk to them really young about like their private oh, parts. Oh, I'm sure you did, especially not being touched. What and, happened to you? And and yeah. then actually, when my oldest son was like two, he found his wiener, and he was like all about his balls and wieners. And he would like <laughs> I would find him on the couch in the corner, play like, like just. Just, just shit, like, fondling himself <laughs> and I started getting wonderful. really nervous because I was like okay is some like, like, is, he, is this normal <laughs> behavior for a boy I've never at had two, a boy though. you know and so I didn't know is this normal at two or is somebody touching him or showing him this and yeah. then he's like playing with himself and you know I don't know I got really freaked out and I started to ask my husband all these questions and kind of like harassing him and everybody else like, hey, what do you think? What do you think? You know, and he's like, well, let's just be careful of who we let him around and then kind of observe and everything. But after looking it up online, it said it was completely normal yeah, for kids to like find themselves. And then if you react in a negative way, because I would be like, don't touch yourself or, you know, put your weenie away, you know, and like <laughs> I would try to like oh keep him from touching himself. Yeah. Then they get even more intrigued and then they want to touch themselves even more, you know. Yeah. So that was the negative reaction. So for my second son, when he got to that age and started finding himself, Instead of telling him, like, no, you don't touch your weenie or whatever, I would just ignore it and let him touch it. And then he just kind of would touch it. And then he would just, like, he was over it. Was he didn't it. really care about it or wasn't as intrigued as the first one, you know. But, okay, so you have boys and a girl, too. Do you feel like it's different? Like, it's do different, you think huh? it's different it's with the boys and girls? Like, who do different. you think should talk to the boys about it and who should talk to your daughter about it? Like, you and your daughter and your husband and the boys? So I used to think that 
you know, the dads talk to the sons and the women talk to the, the girls. But then I recently heard, like, both of you guys should because at the end of the day, your son is going to be having sex with a girl, a girl and mm -hmm. needs a woman's perspective, you know? Yeah. And a, a girl will be having sex with a guy. Who, well, who knows? That's Let's true. just say. Very true. And she needs a male's perspective, you know, and... And that would kind of give them the best of both worlds so that you kind of can explain both to them. So now I'm like, okay, my husband's going to have to have an uncomfortable conversation with our daughter, too, to let yeah. her know that she should be respected and, you know, all that. So you had your husband talk to him. Are you going to talk but to him? I'm going to talk to him, too. Um, I'm going to talk to him, too. So. Um, and what are you going like, to say, though? Oh, I don't. I'm going to write a script. <laughs> I haven't started writing it yet, Write a but I'm writing it. I just read it. I'm gonna make. Damn it. I'm gonna make. Um, what are those flashcards? Yeah, pictures. Like, pictures. First off. <laughs> See, and I feel like we come from a more emotional standpoint because we're women and we're very emotional. So we have to tell them like how to respect women, how to take care of their heart, not just treat them like you know they're a piece of meat and just have sex with them and then ditch them, you know, and like... And quit it. Yeah. But, but parenting in this day and age is so much harder from back in the day. From us growing up, like, you would have to, like, steal your parents' VHS and then go look at a little something, something. Like, now, like, if your kids have a cell phone, all you have to do is type it in and it's yeah, free. It's like, there. it's so hard. And then you have their free... I don't know, this... And this kids new younger now talking Woo. about sex or this having sex. generation is something else. Yeah. I remember when we were little, my dad had these, like, um, nudie magazines, you know, in his <laughs> toolbox. And then, like, playing cards that were nudie. Mm -hmm. And he had, like, a Howard Stern nudie video. He had quite a bit of <laughs> So <laughs> that's how stuff. you learned And me and my own. brother would find it because we would be in the, you know... Um, in the tool shed and just getting oh, my dad's tools and then they didn't hide it good and we would be good. like oh look look what look what dad has you know we didn't hide it good at all my parents so we were young all, when we came across a lot of stuff yeah you are that's yeah. what you think back and you're like boom when I was that age yeah this is about right mm -hmm. but my parents used to like all the tapes that were not labeled were all their sex tapes I ended up finding it out so early and then like the other, of them? no heck oh no. my god <laughs> No, never. Like I, I would have died Woo! if I put one of those in. I love my parents. The, there? the way they were when I found them, they ain't hooking up. No, way. <laughs> they weren't. They not, weren't recording. No, nah, they weren't recording. Maybe it was a bad day. You know, know take it easy. They were trying. They just trying to have sex and like get prickle. <laughs> well, my mom always says, like even with her nails, she's like. If it's just dried up, just give it up. Like, just leave it. Like, what? <laughs> Wait, yeah. hold on. What? Did, let's that explain was her that. Advice if it's for just you? dried up, just give it up. Like, yeah. well, like she was like, go about, with it. She like, was talking do about it. like using like lube and stuff, and she's like. No, I don't have time for all that. If I'm dried up down there, I'm just going to leave it alone. Me. Yeah, she's like, I'm not going to go buy this stuff. I'm like, see, like, you leave are it alone evil. and then still have sex. No, no, like, like even not have it all the time. Like, hang okay. up the towel. Like, just tell them, like, all yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> so, since you are going to have the conversation soon, mm -hmm. are you going to go a certain route? Like, the scientific route, traditional, romantic, religious? Wait, Paul, what is that? <laughs> I don't have that. Isn't that the question. next question? Yeah, go down. What? Where is this? What age is appropriate? We already, we already went there. Talked, talked about that. What? That's how smooth I am, guys. Look at <laughs> you. Going down. Which, which route going down? are you which going to take? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. Go ahead. One, two, three. <laughs> you guys, one, two, three. <laughs> um, I'm going to go scientific for sure. I just feel like it's easier. I mean, it will vary. Like, how you talk about sex with your son versus your dog. That's the next question. That's not even my <laughs> Don't give me any more mimosas. <laughs> Let's start. I'm like, wait a minute. I tried to put it in a sentence. I tried to put it in a sentence. I'm like, wait, this is not my shit. <laughs> Here. <laughs> always put in notes like buy it. Oh well, laugh, just laugh out loud. Okay. 
All right. I got this. Janelle, shut your ass up. We should keep that in there. That's you true. You try to play it off like, it will be. I was like, oh, I'm not going to ask that then. I mean, we kind of already asked that. I did try to like oh smooth it in there, but I'm like, wait a minute, that has a dot next to it. <laughs> oh my god these <laughs> contracts don't work <laughs> oh my god that was too funny all okay. right ready go go so i'm <laughs> <laughs> so i'm definitely gonna take the scientific for sure i feel like it's just it's already an awkward thing to be having the conversation so i think uh -huh. it puts a little ease on it when you just do it scientifically <laughs> like you just you know it'll but then I feel like it could backfire on you because it, it, it'll it get like those videos that I hate it. Yeah, school. yeah. So I Do they mean. still do that at school? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Devin told me that they, they did it at school and all the kids did. But they, they Devin said they tried to do it cool and they were like, oh my God, some, like, be having, being, going through puberty is lit or something like they tried what? to like, yeah like they tried to like make it cool and he was like it did it just made us like oh god turn Awkward. this tape yeah. off so i, I don't know too hard. maybe i'll just but you can't keep it i mean maybe i'll just keep it real like look now are you gonna take the route where you keep it real or are you gonna take the parental route and tell them like you should wait till you're married and that kind of thing oh definitely i feel like as a parent like what i but the thing is like do you feel like boys usually don't wait till they're married like girls are like, like nobody a little, does nobody, nobody does. does but there's some people i know some people who yeah. are still holding out and waiting for their marriage what is that girls or guys it's a girl no guys but what is that football player tim tebow yeah. mm -hmm. he was like um you know waiting mm -hmm. and then they kicked him off the team no, so not why they know, i know i know <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah so i actually i think i'll use a little bit of both like, because I want it to be a real, genuine conversation. And if I go too scientific, then it'll feel, like, rehearsed, you know? So yeah. I want to be as right. real as possible. How about you? How about you? I feel like I'm going to do... I, I want to touch on all of it. <laughs> of course. Oh, you're... That's your, how I feel. Yeah, your I kind of be... want to, like, go the scientific route and teach them, you know that women can get pregnant very easily if you just insert the penis to the vagina, you know, like That's it's exactly kind of how you're going to you say know? it. <laughs> yeah, sure. But I also want them to save it for I mean obviously I could only tell them so much and they're going to do whatever the heck they want to do, but I feel like my mom kind of told me, you know, you should save it for somebody who's special and blah, blah, blah. And I, I think I did, even though I wasn't married when I had sex, but like I did hold out a long time, you know, and I saved it for somebody who was special, who I thought I was going to marry. And there you go. And like, you married and, you them, marry and I'm marrying the foo. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> like, that's really good. But what about the people who give it up and then they don't? That I feel like that's... Oh, like, like you're no. saying like... If I was a hip, like if I told him he had, that's another thing. Like I can't expect him to not have sex because I know I did mm -hmm. it and I don't, I, and I know he knows that we had him, we conceived him before we were married, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I don't want to be a hypocrite, you know? And that's another thing too is like, I hate lying. Like, because I, I won't go into it cause it's not my story, but as a kid I was lied to a lot about different dates and ages and everything like that that it, it made me feel like I was a detective always wondering what was the truth and what was yeah. a lie and like trying to figure out and solve these freaking mysteries my whole damn life is that where you're so detailed and ask like a lot of questions yes <laughs> I I really like I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm a detective <laughs> uh, but um and I don't want my kids to feel that way I don't want them to feel like I'm lying to them you know so even though there's gonna be things that I don't tell them but I'm not gonna like the important things I feel like I I'm gonna be honest I mean do they need to know how many times or where yeah, yeah. or things like that no but yeah I don't know to each their own though you know yeah, I yeah. mean everybody has their own personal feelings about it I'm gonna do I, I mean, this is what I think I'm going to do, but I want to do, like, a mixture of all, like, scientifically mm -hmm. using the correct terms um, while romantically incorporating, like, the 
what like what the Bible says between a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, nice. I'm you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, definitely. <clears throat> That's, I just want to do a mixture of all of it, mm-hmm. I think. But we'll see when we get there. When He's only five. There, exactly. I don't know. So do you think it'll vary how you talk about sex to your sons and daughters, since you guys both have sons and daughters? Absolutely. I think that because I feel like boys, like, naturally get away with a lot more stuff than girls, you know, like, if boys are, like, I, sometimes it's praise like if they have like a ton of girls and it's like oh yeah you're a boss you're a player but when a girl does it it's like oh what no she yeah, yeah yeah so it's because it's the the double standards of everything I feel like it makes it super hard to have the conversation um but definitely I feel like it'll, it'll be a different one the conversation I have with Harley will be t- it's gonna be totally opposite from what I have with the boys and I think that's just natural because I don't feel like you can have the same talk you have with your boy with your girl because yeah. it's two totally different things going on like you know it shoots out different I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's just like two totally different things so I feel like in a sense you almost have to you almost have to see and I don't know I feel I feel kind of opposite. I feel like, I don't know how my mom spoke to my brother about it, but I think she was pretty real with me and open and honest about, you know, have like, you're going to have these feelings and because, and you know, I had these feelings and these feelings are normal to have, but you should wait until, you know, yeah. you trust somebody and until you're older to make the right decision of who you're going to have. So because she put it like that, I feel like I could do that with both a, go- a boy or a, a daughter, you know? Um, and I don't know. I've, I'm very protective over my boys, too. Like, I I don't know. I, I feel very protective over the boys, too. And I feel like because... I think it, it might be because my brother... I, like, I adore my older... You know, my older brother mm-hmm. has always been, like, super really close to me. And every girlfriend that he had... I would, you know, see and kind of get, like, protective kind of over him Mm -hmm. and his heart. And, like, I would get really attached or... I don't know. And and I I can't just let my kid just date whoever they want to date. (laughs) I mean, they're going to, but Mm -hmm. I would want to try to guide them in the right direction and... I want to make sure that he chooses the right mate, you know? Because you know, like... Mm -hmm. If oh, they yeah. choose the wrong girl, that could ruin yeah, your whole definitely. relationship with them, definitely. you know? And that's it. You don't see your grandkids. You don't see, you know? Yeah. So I feel like I have to put a lot of emphasis on both of them because if I don't, then maybe my daughter will end up with a good guy, but my son will end up with, you know, Sally, who was at the club, you know, and I mean, not that Sally. Sally's bad, that you know, because we were Sally at the club, but mm-hmm. you know, you just never know. So yes, I do think that I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to talk to both of them and like the same thing. I and I know my husband's more lenient on the the the, the boy whole thing because his parents were lenient on him and more strict on his sister, so it's kind of normal, mm-hmm. but. I think because my dad was strict on all of us, like, he was super strict on my brother, and it didn't matter. Yeah. So, I'm like, nope, if we're going to be strict on the boys, we're going to, or if we're going to be strict on her, we're going to be strict on the boys, and I'm going to really fight for equal rights in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go equal rights. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? I, I mean, we don't have a daughter, but if we ever do, like, I feel like the same, like, I would talk to them similar because I feel like it's the same about sex like that you there's one result if you do it wrong like someone's gonna get knocked up and even though it's the girl that gets knocked up the guy is going to be responsible like Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let my the boys knock up a chick and just let her like ditch her like they're equally responsible I think and that's how I would I mean I don't have a daughter so that's why I think it's easier for me to answer but that's how I feel. And like your heart gets broken just as equal if you're a boy versus a girl. Like a boy can have their heart broken just as much as a girl can get her heart broken. You know what I mean? And I was a boy mom for eight years. You know, so 
to me, I didn't think that I was ever going to have a girl. So to me, I was like, I'm going to be very involved in these boys' lives. And I'm going to freaking oh, tell them everything things. because, yeah, definitely. The, you know, like I have to definitely put a lot into this whole sex talk and all that. Yeah, so that hopefully, because I don't want to be a young grandmother. You yeah. know? Oh, well, I've already <laughs> told Devin, like, well, if you're doing that, and I hope you like her because if she gets pregnant, you're marrying her. Yeah. <laughs> so, She's moving in. So <laughs> think about that. Think about her. Think about it because stuff I'm with her it for life. Fashion. I'm keeping old so fashion. So when we have a you shotgun wedding. talk to them, do you use the real, like, do you use the correct terms like vagina and penis? Vagina! <laughs> vagina slayer. <laughs> <laughs> or you I say weenus. <laughs> <laughs> um... At this age, because uh, my little girl is three, um, she, I don't even know how we came up with this name, but she refers to it as her TT. Down there? Uh-huh. And the boys, we say penis. So what does she call her boobs? She doesn't she, have boobs. She doesn't. Because she doesn't <laughs> I, well, call I know she anything. doesn't, but that's still a For private a while, part. she was calling her private part a pee-pee. Oh, cause because the boys. that's what we call with the boys. And... I'm like, no, you don't have a pee pee. And she's like, I have a tee tee. And then I just went with it. I was like, yes. Yep. You have a tee tee. That's what we're going to name it. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know about your experience with boys, but my boys were very vocal. And they were always talking about balls and wieners around the house. Really? Like, and they were always <laughs> naked. So it was balls and wieners, everything. So, like, they would call their weenie a weenie. Mm -hmm. and then they want, would want to know what a girl's part was. So I just randomly said a feeny because <laughs> a boys have Feenies. weenies and the girls have a feeny. Oh, and they, and I thank God that I did say a feeny because the kid would walk around just saying, like, you have a feeny, you know? And my sister would be like, oh, yeah, oh, what's a feeny, you know? And yeah. I'm like, thank God I didn't say you have a vagina because yeah. he'd be walking around saying you have Very a vagina. Anywhere. He was, to he was three, people. you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's an appropriate age I know some people feel very strongly about teaching them the right terminology and I know it has its benefits I listened to this therapist um, she was saying that you should teach your kids the technical terms because if they're ever touched by someone and they have to tell the doctor or the nurse or relay the message to the police officer you mm -hmm. know they know oh, the exact terminology true. like he touched me in my vagina you know mm -hmm. and there's yeah. no you know shame in saying the word correctly yeah and i totally agree with that i think that's great but i also feel like there's a certain age because if he's two you know my kid mm -hmm. would walk and point to boobies at the like, no mannequins, filter. you know yeah. no filter but and then now they're gonna say vagina you know yeah. so i don't know to each their own you know <laughs> i use um filipino words with the boys oh that's smart like right. glenn and calls his a buto, and that's what we say in Filipino. Oh, for and penis. like a girl's an uki. Oh, that's cute. Ooh, that's cute. Oh, cute. I got an uki. uki. Yeah, so. Uki. Don't touch I mean, as he gets uki. older, maybe I'll say. But like, like my husband tells him, like, oh, don't, like, oh, my balls. So like, mm -hmm. Glennon will walk around and be like, oh, my balls. Oh. And he knows that, like, those are those down there. Oh, my God. So he knows the balls, but he yeah. doesn't know the other parts. Penis. No. So. What are you gonna say to your kids if they ask you if you and your, you and dad have sex? Stay in a child's place. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, your place. Uh, one of my kids, as we mentioned earlier, already listened to podcasts. I don't even know <laughs> what's going on, but um, I do. They really ask that question. Well, I think that age? when you when. They, you're talking to them about sex. Oh, Sometimes a lot of kids it. will say, wait a minute, hold on. So, that's so you're telling me this is how you got pregnant? Dad put his, vag his vagina yeah. into your penis? Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened, <laughs> buddy. Doesn't. Yeah, so, you know, he's going to want to know. And some kids are vocal and they will say, like, hold on, this happened to you? And, you know. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. too, if you tell your girl, like, hey, this is going to hurt the first time you do it. Yeah. She's going to be like, well, Dad like, hurt you? True. That's awful. You well, know, if, if they ask the question, I'm, I'm I always want to keep it 100% real with them. So I'll be like, "Yes, mama was throwing it back." And that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll I'll tell a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot. 
A lot. A reverse cowgirl. Everything. Oh my oh my God. God. I'm not going that far. I'm not going that far. But I'm definitely going to be real and, and tell them, like, yeah, that's how you got here. We had to. But I don't, I'm not going to get all in detail. Right. That I'm not going to do. But Because your oldest already knows. Do you think yeah, your middle one's going to ask your oldest no. about, like, sex questions? Like, Maybe when they're home? older, but right now he's so, so he's innocent. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't think. But maybe when he gets older, he'll go to his older brother yeah. before he comes to me or something. Yeah. You know? So who knows? How about you, Chanel? Uh, I think that I'm going to say, say yes. yes. Say yes, but explain that it is a fun activity that you do. With when you're married like, and you have with your significant your other. significant other, you know, and yeah, yeah. I mean, how else do they think they were created other than like the little birds and bees story you tell them? <laughs> I think that's I'm gonna tell the boys that. Yeah. Are you going to be honest about your sexual history? Like, are you gonna tell them that you were sexually abused when you were little, or? Yes, I I have told them because. You I'm so afraid. Them? Yeah, I'm so afraid oh. of somebody touching them. And especially, usually it happens by a trusted person. Yeah. It could be your family member or a close friend. So I have told them, like, when I was little, when I was five, you know, somebody touched me and I thought that they, they were, you know, a close family member and I could trust them and stuff. So this way they know, like, it does happen. It happened to mom and, like, keep your guard up, you know? And I hate to do that to them but i'd rather them be aware, aware than for somebody to rob them of their innocence you know like yeah. cause I've, i i i kind of toggled with it back and forth like okay am i robbing them from their innocence by warning them about and this them and to telling it. them that this could possibly happen but at the end of the day i'd rather my kid n not be naive and know like hey uncle fred is over there rubbing on my thigh and i'm going to mm -hmm. tell mom because mm -hmm. something's yeah. not right you know before he goes into a room with him, yeah. uh, trusting him, you know? I don't have an Uncle Fred. I, I, I have an Uncle Fred, but not... <laughs> <laughs> that never comes oh, over. Oh, <laughs> man. Why do you Fred. Uncle Fred like I'm that? I'm sorry. I was going to say name. Uncle Bob. I don't know. No, it's not Uncle Fred. <laughs> sorry. It's not Uncle That's Fred. Not, I didn't mean Uncle Fred. Sorry, Uncle Fred. Sorry, I'm, Uncle I'm Fred. apologizing for my friend over here. <laughs> what about you? How about you, Roni? Are you going to be honest about your sexual history with the kids? Uh, no, they don't need to know that <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> now they already know. Now they're just getting nosy. Like, stay out of mama's business. <laughs> no, but um, like Janelle, um, a lot of people don't know, but I was actually sexually abused as a child, too, for a very long time. So that's why I'm all paranoid and I have to talk with them early about things like that so they they know um my daughter doesn't know yet because she will not understand um they know that but, you were yeah and that's why i'm like nobody can touch you and you know going through that so i'm um, definitely they know that but um we'll get more into that later i guess but i will i'd like to think i would tell the boys but we'll see when we get there but I'm like, when you say history, do you mean like, like back the first in the time day? you had sex? Like, I think it's like, are you going to be honest with the first, like how old you were when you first had sex or who it was that it wasn't with daddy, you know, like. Who said that, it wasn't with daddy? Uh, <laughs> why are you just judging me? I'm not judging you. Hey, I got a big old booty, but I ain't been showing it out there like that. She. First of all, I know your story. <laughs> but no, I'm kidding. Oh my but God. But you don't know. Then if you mean place. that way, I'll definitely say my age, which I tried to wait. I said I was going to wait till I was out of high school. I was like, I'm definitely going strong. And you no, know, 17, senior year, homecoming night. Wow. Yeah, remember. How about, do you remember? It was senior year, too. Oh, my God. And it was, <laughs> I was 17? No, so. 17 as yeah. a senior. Um, I think that's pretty good. That so is I know good. some people was giving it up in the eighth grade. Oh, no. Yeah. I was a, a junior. You were a junior, too. I think that's pretty good. But now, do you for, like, yeah, eight, same, like, a long time. Same. I was with them like all of my high school years. Are you going to tell your kids that you regret it or that, you know, 
I don't regret it. Like even though, of course, it didn't work out. I don't regret it because it, it like I've learned. I learned so much from that relationship. It helped me grow. I'm, yeah, I'm like, you I'm are who you are today yeah, because, because of, of mm-hmm. your past. I mean, there's it's it's hard to say like you regret something that happened to you. But the funny thing is. I hear that, this is just a quick fact, and we go on to the next question. I hear that he took my virginity on homecoming, and then, like, two days later, like, took another girl at the school oh, moment. But I don't know if that was true or not. He robbed you. So ass. what do you say when they ask where do babies come from? The stork. You, what, you tell them that right now? Well, it depends, because my kids, the age difference is so different, like, you know, my 13-year-old already knows what's up. Like, we yeah. told him, like, you know. But my 7-year-old, does we say stork right now. Like, yeah. I feel like he's way too young to get that talk. And then Harley is way too young. So no, I no, really say Janelle. stork. Um, I say, then, like, the my belly. You know, I, I've always said in my belly. But I like, think, how did like... how get there, though? They never really asked in oh. detail, so I, I think that the next time they ask, I'm a little bit more prepared, and I think that I will go the scientific route and tell them, like, okay, well, women's bodies have this, and we are made to, you know, carry babies and blah, 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 blah. So, Landon goes to, like, like a Christian preschool, so he knows about, like, they teach them about God and stuff, so I, he always asks me, because I, he always said, I always say God created like people and your the bugs and whatever you know, so I just tell them that God puts an egg in mommy's belly and then the egg grows and grows and grows and grows and that's all he knows. <laughs> that, that's kind of that's the truth. Yeah, that is the truth. Um, do you allow them to go to slumber parties? Um, so I'm real old fashioned. I don't really like slumber parties. Um, I only let them go with like close friends and family that I know have like morals and structure and like that I feel super you know comfortable with like but random friends at school where I don't know nothing about their parents nothing like that you're not going don't ask me the kids can come over here and spend the night their parents are comfortable but I don't know look I don't know their parents you can't go so that's kind of my rule me too I I feel the same way Mm -hmm. I I know it was hard because like as a kid my dad was super strict, so I wanted to go spend the night at everywhere, and he was always like, no. I think after, well, I don't know. Maybe he would have been strict my whole life, you know, yeah. regardless of what happened to me. But he was, like, super strict about spending the night places and going to people's houses and stuff. So, um, and I don't know if that had anything to do with that, but and now I understand as a, a parent, like, you can't rewind that shit, you know, yeah. you can't yeah. take that from their memory and, like, yeah. pretend that it never happened, you know, so I would rather be overly protective and not let them spend the night at everybody, but it's hard because my husband's different, like, he, his parents were really lenient on him, and he went and spent the night everywhere, everywhere. so when we have this conversation, he's like, well, I kind of don't feel that same way about being so strict and not letting them have those experiences because some of his funnest experiences were yes. spending the night at his friend's house because nothing like that ever happened to him you know yeah. so it's it's hard yeah. it's hard but i've never him. sent them i mean he's only gone to like with my brother and my sister-in-law or with my mom that's mm-hmm. it like he's never asked to sleep anywhere and no one's ever asked to have him sleep over so he, he's little still yeah so. he's yeah. small so yeah, not unless it's family, I think. My 11-year-old is getting to that age where more people are like, you know, oh, we're having a slumber party for my birthday, and it's a friend from school, and I'm like, I don't know. No. <laughs> no, I don't know them. I don't know them. All right. Does your husband have different views on this topic? Roni. Different views on this topic. Um, He's so, like laid back and like when it comes to the boys and my son's older he's like relax this is this is the age that he's supposed to do. this is the age that he's supposed to do this and I'm like no he, he's That's growing up baby. I don't like it yeah. like you know especially it's it's my first son and like I feel like what sucks not sucks about parenting but that's so hard is that He's my first son, so I've never had a teenager before. So I'm, like, going through this learning, like, and it's 
it's crazy because I'm like, oh my god, why don't they tell you this? Or maybe they do tell you, and I'm just not paying attention. Like a whole nother level. But yeah, but my husband is like, oh yeah, he's like, you don't even know the stuff I. Was. He's good because the stuff I was doing at that age, you would just oh, die. Gosh. And I'm like, you're such a hood rat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, my husband is a lot more lenient. And he's already made jokes like, you know, his sons are going to be able to do whatever they want and his daughter is going to be locked up in the basement, even though we don't have a basement. But I, and then I told him, no, then I'm going to sneak her ass out because that's not fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Devil's, that, that good old devil standard. Because right she, if, if she doesn't confide in me, she's gonna still do it when she's gonna yeah you know not confide in anybody yeah. uh, only her friends and sometimes your friends steer you in the best. wrong direction yeah. you know so i mean i luckily i was always really close to my mom where if i was in a bad situation and i knew my dad would flip out you know i would i could still call my mom and be like hey mom like this party got broken up by the cops or something like I'm going to be home a little bit past my curfew and I never lied to her before so she always trusted me and she was like okay and then she would cover for me but I didn't make it like a, a normal oh, thing yeah, you know like habit. Mm -hmm. or she would come and pick me up and she wasn't upset you know because I never I don't know I try to be honest with her she always told me like hey if you're honest I will be there Honesty for you is yeah. the you know? best policy honestly I feel like me and my husband are on the same page. Mm -hmm. We're not at that stage yet where we have to talk to them really about mm -hmm. it, but I think we're pretty much on the same level for now. We'll see. It's yeah. hard. <laughs> when you find out that they have I their know, first crush, I'm it scared. is so hard. All of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, how serious is this crush? You know? Yeah. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. your heart sinks, and then yeah. you hope that or they don't break it. Or when you find, um, when your son accidentally sends a picture to his dad of him making out with a girl. <gasps> Did he? What do you mean accidentally? Oh, his, he was supposed to be like pulling weeds and his dad is like, Oh, send me a picture of what you did today. So he <laughs> oh said, my he God. said the picture was like right there so he just clicked really fast and he sent it to of dad him making out kissing a girl and then my husband sends it to me and he's like look at this shit and i looked and i'm like come on you're killing what me did you small. guys tell him <sighs> well he has a really open relationship with his dad which is really really good. good and he talks to me a lot too but i i said i have to start working on this because sometimes <laughs> i'm like i don't want to hear it i don't agree with dating this young because mm -hmm. you don't know what you're doing you have so many emotions you're gonna get attached you're gonna like you, you yeah. focus on school and mm -hmm. your sports and stuff and that comes later because the heartache is no fun joke so no. yeah so he 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 talks to his dad a lot, and he tells me. But I was like, I mean, I knew, like I said, the boy is going to high school, so I knew he was. It was about to come. Yeah, but you know. it, that's it's really hard as a parent. Like you have to is have those uncomfortable moms? conversations. No, because dads are gonna feel the same way about their baby girls. But the you know? girls, like they're not like that with the boys, because my husband's so laid back. He's like, yeah. Do you think like, he's gonna be like, laid back with Harley? No, no. he's uh, not. Yeah. He's not. He's not. He already said. She can't wear makeup or date until she's 30. My dad didn't even let me paint my nails. Ooh. Yeah. He was super traditional Look Mexican. Like, yeah. Super strict. Okay. Yeah. All right. We want to hear how you talk to your kids about sex or how you're planning on talking to them. Do you or someone you know relate to any of our experiences from this episode? If not, how is yours different? Other moms may find comfort relating to your story. Share it in our private Facebook group where the conversations continue with our supportive mom tribe. We can't wait to see you there. Bye. Bye. -bye. And cook. <laughs>